the Global Risk Barometer, a report that identifies the most important risk factors for companies of the next 12 months and beyond, released by Allianz Global and Corporate Specialty, is based on the insights of over 1,900 risk experts in 80 countries. Five years ago, cybersecurity ranked number 15 on their list. It should surprise no one that in 2018, cybersecurity is now number two on the list. For Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson with Jenny Subra, head of cybersecurity for Allianz Global and Corporate Specialty. Jenny, can you explain and contextualize a little bit about what's on this risk, how you put on this list, how you put the list together, and the importance of cybersecurity? Sure. So the Allianz Risk Barometer is a report that's published annually, as you mentioned, by Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty. We survey our top clients and customers around the world. This year, we had close to 2,000 risk experts and clients weigh in on what they view as their top risks for the coming year. Um, as you mentioned, cyber risk and business interruption has risen the ranks to one of the top concerns for our customers around the world. Businesses are worried about emerging risks and liabilities, larger scale losses arising from new technology, when we consider the interconnectivity of technology, the globalization of business, shared reliance on common internet infrastructure, service providers, um, supply chain risk, these are all contributing factors to the new environment. The nature of risk is evolving. The rise in cyber-related incidents that have been highly publicized means that cyber risk and business interruption has become a very top concern for companies around the world. That coupled with the potential for cyber catastrophic events, events that potentially can impact not just one individual company that's been targeted, but a widespread uh, company list that is both large and small, um, has really contributed to the concern that is published in this report. So I'm glad you mentioned that spectrum of small to, to catastrophic cyber risk. Are, are companies concerned in general about cybersecurity or are there very particular types of, of concerns that they have, such as data breaches or infrastructure attacks? People are generally concerned about cybersecurity. Very simply, every company has been or will be impacted by this issue. It's not overhyped. If anything, it's been underappreciated for a very long time. Companies have long underestimated their cyber risk, and they've been surprised about the impact and the disruption, and frankly, the cost that a cyber incident has on their business. It's very eye-opening. The perception has begun to change as the number of cyber incidents has increased and impacted companies both large and small. No company is too small to be impacted. It's no longer just the large names that have a high level of financial or healthcare information or just other personal information of their customers. Um, this is the reason that cyber risk has risen in concern across the board. I think also just a general um, lack of understanding, lack of knowledge around the topic um, has driven a lot of the concern around this as well. Uh, we're seeing customers looking to educate themselves. We're seeing customers looking to the experts to help them with the process and help them navigate the waters of figuring out what their risks are, depending on what industry they're in, et cetera, um, you know, depending on the size of the company and what uh, vector they're, um, you know, looking at in terms of threats. But you know, we're really seeing people um, interested, boards of directors are um, educating themselves, creating committees that hadn't existed before, um, reporting all the way up to the board level. And so that is very promising um, in terms of, you know, people looking to manage their risk going forward. So how can companies reframe what is a very legitimate fear as and, and risk as an opportunity? How can companies, large and small, uh, first introduce education to their team and make a shift towards being more cyber secure as we head into 2018? I can't emphasize the need to interface with other humans enough. What we've seen in the past is the IT department is 
siloed. It would be off in the corner managing the stuff that nobody really understood. And the change that we've seen is that companies are now, um, the groups within companies are talking to each other, which, you know, just warms my heart. Um, we see the general counsel's office, the risk management office, the audit committee, and the IT group all working together towards a common goal. And, and that is really the, the most basic building block of um, moving towards a more secure uh, system of managing the company. Of course, you know, the regular um, evaluating business continuity plans, disaster recovery plans on an ongoing basis. It's not a checkbox. It's not a once and done process. Um, you know, I get requests similar to a, what is the cyber for dummies? Um, what is the process? Humans love certainty. If I do this, then this won't happen. If I do this, my company's data will be more secure. If I do this, then if a breach happens, it won't be so bad that I will get fired for it afterward. Um, but, you know, just looking to the checkbox approach is not enough. Plans must be tested, updated, overlaid against new threats out in the market, um, and of course the ever-changing litigation environment. Uh, you mentioned employee training. The culture piece is critical. Culture of a company is something that I look very closely at when we're evaluating risk. It doesn't just come down to the cybersecurity piece itself and whether people are encrypting or segregating their networks and that sort of thing. Um, the employee training and awareness is critical. We see more than 60% of intrusions starting because somebody is unaware, um, they're clicking on the wrong file or link. So many of our clients have now virtual phishing campaigns um, to help identify where some of those weaknesses are or the weak links, if you will, um, you know, in terms of their employee base and, and helping those employees to become uh, more educated and more aware. Two other things that companies are really looking to do to protect themselves is taking a critical eye to vendor management. Um, in many cases, especially in industries like shipping or transportation or manufacturing, many of these vendor contracts have been in place for a very long time. Long-standing relationships, having a fresh look at those contracts is very important. Evaluating um, on an ongoing basis some of those indemnification provisions, limitation of liability around cyber incidents, and of course, working with the experts. A full cottage industry has sprung up around cybersecurity services, um, providing services like tabletop exercises, penetration testing, of course, the employee training piece, having companies take advantage of the expertise that's available to them, really, A, helps improve their risk profile, helps educate them, on what the risks are, and of course, um, puts their own selves at ease as well, because now they're more aware and more educated. Uh, so human interaction can help tamp down some of these existential fears that companies feel on a routine basis. Jenny Subra, head of cyber at Allianz. Jenny, uh, I, I have to ask you before we let you go, uh, cyber was number two on your list. What ranked as number one? Business interruption, as it turns out. Uh, for the first time, business interruption and cyber risk were neck and neck in the risk barometer. But when you look at it overall, these risks are increasingly interlinked. Um, whether it's resulting from attacks like WannaCry or Petya, uh, systems failure, uh, we're looking at companies that are very networked and interconnected and relying upon each other for the operations of their business. And so, if one piece goes down, everybody could potentially go down, or it has long-lasting downstream effects in terms of um, being able to operate your business on a day-to-day -day basis. And so business interruption was number one and cyber risk was number two, but they really go hand in hand. 